welcome to the first Amazing Race 29 recap episode of your team number, the Amazing Race podcast from Reality TV Warriors. My name is Michael Halmstad, and joining me for his first Amazing Race podcast ever with us is my fellow Brit who hates LA because you can't jaywalk, Anthony Williams. Hello, and thanks for picking me, Michael. You don't regret picking me, do you? I don't. You are the, the Brooke to my Scott. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. There was no hesitation there, so I can believe that that's true. As long as you're not the Kevin to my Jen. <laughs> I would never be that. And back for her sixth season of Amazing Race Podcasts is the Australian who would love the chance to go on a stranger season because she doesn't have to see anyone she knows, Michelle Pierce Denovan. <laughs> Woohoo! I can't, I can't believe I can talk about a season. It's been so long. It has, because you didn't join us for any of Asia, so it is like a year since you've done an Amazing Race podcast. Oh, I know, I've missed it. And it is a good episode to start with, I think. Because despite the lack of tasks, I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a, I had quite low expectations this season, and I think it's because it's been not really been much hype, and it's been pushed back and pushed back. But yeah, I thought this was a really, really good premiere. And also, I have been kind of fighting for an All Stranger season for a long while. I love the concept of a Stranger season. So I was probably going to like it anyway. I like this cast because they're all quite nice and normal and annoyingly. I couldn't criticise them too much in the bios. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that 12 of them said they wanted to go to Italy. <laughs> yes, it's that big Italy thing, isn't it, again? It is. Let's just talk about Italy for an hour or so, because I know that the race is really <laughs> like it. <laughs> Oh God! Was it was it um was it Justin and Diana's season which had quite a lot of Italy references? Yeah, every time we mention Italy on the preview now, we mention Krista and uh, Tiffany purely because Krista yeah. loves it every time we mention Italy. Oh, that's right. And take the piss out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the the Krista Devono memorial answer is saying you want to go to Italy because your family's from there. Yes. It's just how it works. So, shockingly, LA is the starting city, as it has been in the past 50 or so seasons. And from Grand Hope Park, 22 strangers will team up and race around the world. But before that, we get the random, let's put in Luke and Margie and Dave and Connor for no apparent reason. Yeah, th three teams they use as evidence of brilliant relationships. And fun fact, oh. they are three of my least favourite teams ever. In fact, <laughs> at least one of them is my least favourite team of all time. Yeah. Was it, what, was who was the other one? It was Bopper and Mark, who, right. as oh, we've previously mentioned on the podcast, I hate with a fiery passion. Well, they're one of my favourites, and I've said that before. <laughs> You're wrong. And Luca Maggi, one of no, my favourites. So. Oh, God. Tar casuals. Tar casuals. <gasps> Don't you ever say that again. <laughs> I will come over and find you and hunt you down. <laughs> my God. Um, yeah, I like Margie and Luke. Just for yeah. the entertainment value. They'd be yeah. in my top uh, top 10 couples. I think they were on my top 10, actually. Weren't they on my top 10 that I did last year that I put on the Facebook page? I think I did. I can't remember, honestly. I don't pay you too don't much remember attention what to you I guys. Do, Michael. No. no, I don't pay attention to anything <laughs> anyone else does. It's kind of, kind of my so MO. Insular. Yeah. So insular. Uh. The world revolves around me, Michelle, and you should know that. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> but yeah, Popper and Mark are awful, in summary. Love them. Love them. You're wrong. <laughs> Having said that, when I was travelling with Logan, I did... When, when was it? There was one day where I was just constantly doing Mark and Mallory impressions. <laughs> oh, God. I have your backpack. <gasps> I don't have no seriously? holes. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been so annoyed. I resurrected the uh, the Mark and Mallory impression, the Mark and Mallory Julie impression that only I do. I can't remember why. I, I think it might have been when we were um, flying to Dublin. Actually, for some reason I just kept doing Mark and Mallory impressions. Oh, can I tell you something? Yeah, she can tell me something, talking, Michelle. Tell me something. Talking, oh my god, talking about impressions. Because when you said the word impressions, I remembered you saying Bertram. Bertram. Um, Yes. Oh, my God. My life is complete now. He finally liked one of my comments. <gasps> oh, my God. Wow. 
I've had Phil for years and years, but Bertram was like, I had to get him. I was so excited yesterday. Michelle, that's it's going on the soundboard. <laughs> Pardon? That's going on the soundboard. The clip of you saying, I've had <laughs> Phil for years, but I wanted Bertram. <laughs> <laughs> And weirdly, your alternative intro was uh, the Australian who would love a ride from Phil. <laughs> oh, my God. I just can't believe that finally, finally, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, go on. Let's start. Let's start. <laughs> yeah, no off-topic behaviour, Michelle. I know what you're like. Oh, dear. You're a terrible influence on the rest of us. Yes, yes. Continue. And... The race is nine countries, 17 cities, and 36,000 miles, which is a decent race course for once. We have had a lot less than that. Yeah, yeah, nine countries sounds interesting. No, there's no new countries, though, is there, in this season? No, no, there is no new countries that I know of. But there is a lot of places they've not been to for a long while. Hmm. I mean, Panama, 19. We saw Venice in that preview, which was season four. There's rumours of another... Um, well, in fact, they've confirmed Greece now, so I can say it. Um, Greece was season nine. So they've, they're they going back to their old haunts, if nothing else. It's a long mm. time ago. Season mm. nine. It's not China or India. I don't think there is any China yeah. or India, actually. Am I mm. No, I don't think there is. Is there a third world country put in there? Um, I'm trying to remember, because I, I saw the country list when, it, like, when they were filming. So it's a long time ago. Um... Mm. There probably is, I just can't remember which one. I just like their reactions when they're in third world. Yeah, but then they take it a little bit too far, like on season 21, where they just did four episodes of Poverty Porn. Hmm. Which is the stretch that nearly killed my love of Tar. Nearly. It hasn't, though. And we get some intro introductions to some of our, our new players. Uh, and Mikey Negative says he can be a pain in the ass, so he needs someone who can calm him down. That's going to happen. And Jesse specifically says she does not want Asian Barbie or Jen. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> In fact, there's 22 people here. I'm happy to work with anybody but her. <laughs> <laughs> and she's proven right. So there you go. Yeah. I'm going to just brag here. Did Logan and I not say that Jen would be in the first team out? I think you may have said that, yeah. Wow. We did also say that Floyd would be in the second team out, but, you know, I'm, I've come around on Floyd. I really like Floyd. Oh, I don't think they're going anywhere. No, they're going a long way. Yeah. Becker is probably the only person in the cast who Floyd is perfect to be teamed up with. I have to say, these pairings have turned out pretty much as well as they could have done, I think. I, I could not have wished for anything better than normal Scott, the most normal person ever to be on the race, and the person who who actually broke our criticisms of the bios, paired up with Brooke, who is my absolute favourite. I love her. What do you like so much about Brooke? She's just going to be crazy. She's the new Haley. I can tell. I, I, really? I have, well, yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that. I have put it, in my note, Scott and Brooke, are these the new Blairly? It, if anyone oh. in this cast is going to stand in the streets of Amsterdam with a wonky bike helmet shouting at someone, it will be Brooke. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> mm. Could be. If it's not, if it's not Becca. No, it, it will be 100% it'll be Brooke. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I I just get such a good vibe from her. You could tell from her answers that she knows that she's so high strung, but she doesn't actually care, and she just finds it hilarious. Okay, okay. I'm I'm guessing we'll see more of her. It, it felt like she was a little bit in um, Scott's shadow this week, but Scott's such a fun character. I'm not surprised. So yeah, I think they could be a really really fun team. And at the start line, they have to race to find a piece of luggage with the Panamanian flag. That's the Panamanian Joey. Panamanian. Oh, if only these people did some research before they go into this, eh? Floyd did. Floyd did. He's, he's learned all the flags. Which flag was it that he actually tried to use? Uh, uh, can't remember. I don't remember the Panamanian flag. I remember all the major ones. I have no idea. Weird reason that I know the Panamanian flag. It was the merge flag of the second season of UK Survivor. Of course. Of course you know that. Jeez. This is the one that started with 12 people, can I point out, and emerged at like eight. They had the red team and the blue team, and they came together as a purple tribe under the Panamanian flag. Were they, was it 
shot in yes, yes, Panama? It, it was shot. Okay. It was shot in the same location as um, Survivor Panama, Panama. Exile Island, yeah. <laughs> Island of Skulls, whatever historians call it. Mm. And that that season also set a world record for the longest immunity challenge ever, at twenty four hours and one minute. What was wow. that? That was a standing on a log challenge over water. But how much? How long was ours? Uh, shorter than that. Shorter than that. Six and a half. Yeah. Twenty four hours. Twenty four hours and one minute, because the previous year had set had done that exact challenge as the merged um, immunity challenge, and they went for exactly 24 hours and wow. basically the, the person who won said i want to try and beat the record and Jeez. stayed up for 24 hours and one minute uh so yeah at the start line they have to race to find a piece of luggage with the panamanian flag on it from a shop that is two blocks southeast and seven blocks west and then return to phil uh, the earlier you arrive the more likely you are to be able to pick your partner he said that so fast. I was like, "What? Where?" I had no idea. I, I, southeast. I was like, I was trying to think of that in my brain, and then I'm like, yeah. no, "No." Basically, run the streets of LA, find the luggage with the Panamanian flag on it, run back. I would have been so lost. I, I have no idea how people know which no. way north, south, east, and west is. I, I would have just followed, followed everybody. Yeah, I would. Do you want to know the trick? All American street signs have the direction on them. Okay, no well, that way. would make it easier. And they're all like in straight lines, aren't they? Because they're all blocks. A vast, vast majority of them will have the, the directional. Because it'll be like street west. Mm. Their streets are like little rectangles. It's just mm -hmm. so uniform, it's ridiculous. So that is why Phil gave those directions. Okay, I still would be following people. Yeah, definitely. As long as they weren't your family. Why on earth... Were there so many people off by themselves? Why didn't they one? Why didn't they all run in one group? I don't get it. Did some people think they were just brainier than the rest of them and thought I'll just run off by myself? I'm assuming they just wanted to have first choice. And where were these twenty-two cameras? How about that for a start? Not just the normal eleven. Let's just employ twenty-two to come and run along the streets. Well, the way it, it works with tar filming is each team has a cameraman, but there's also camera people at the, the challenges. Yeah. yeah. So it'll just yeah. have been them okay. who were employed, yeah, basically. Yeah. So yeah, mm. that's probably where they came from. But surprisingly, it's a nice, subtle start for Amazing Race. They wonder why Reality Fan Forum finds them every year. This is the sort of reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like sitting around. ducks. Sitting yeah. ducks, starting in LA. Yeah, let's all spread them out and make them run around streets and yeah. Yeah, just, just <laughs> running into a, a luggage store and wrecking the place while there are actual customers in there. <laughs> I didn't even look at RFF. They would have had a field day. They had a field day for this Lego. Yeah. Think. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I love the fact that before 90% of this cast have got any confessionals, Brooke is already on two. Yes. <laughs> She's got yeah. to be a big character. <laughs> yeah, I did make a note of that. Yeah, there was a couple that, that got really quite a lot of confessionals early on. Well, Becker and Floyd. Yeah. Uh, blatantly lasting forever. Scott, well, Brooke, and but then by extension, Scott are blatantly lasting. Who else got loads of, uh, loads of confessionals? Um... Ma Mikey Negative and Liz. Oh, Mikey Negative got quite a few. Yeah, Mike got a lot in this. Uh, yeah. So that's good, because I like all of those people. So it's great for me. <laughs> I like all of this cast, and even more so at the end of the episode. So there you go. It's a pretty great good start. Cast. Yeah. And something that was omitted from someone's bio, Scott went to Harvard. Mm. So he probably gets on well with Joey, who enjoys parking his car in Harvard Yard, and other Boston stereotypes. What? You know the Boston accident? Yeah, so you, you mean he packed his car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see what you mean. Boston Rob. <laughs> the only reason why I know a Boston accent. Hey, listen up. Go wise <laughs> up. <laughs> Boston was awesome when I was there. Boston and I were basically my two favourite cities from uh, from our trip to America. I, I would like to, to go to Boston, but you would have to hire a car. Just so you can ask for one. <laughs> can I hire a car? Yeah. 
I need a car. Although it sounds like Phil Spa. Yeah, I was going to say it's sounding a little bit Phil Coke. Hey, do you know what? I, I was thinking that as I was watching this episode, if Joey gets to win a spa, he could top the pronunciation. It would be great. If they can say it together. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Vank is basically the human embodiment of the television program King of the Nerds. I know <laughs> Ben made that joke, but that is King of the Nerds editing. Yep. Um... Jen says that she wants Kevin, which is, of course, massive foreshadowing. Do not do that. Um, and Jessie is six foot three and alpha, apparently. Does she call herself an alpha male? It sounded like she did. I she wrote did. down that as well. And I, I, I played it back about six times. And, like, and then I just ended up writing in my notes, describes herself as an alpha male? Question mark. So I thought maybe I've misheard it. But the more I listened, the more I'm pretty much, pretty much sure she said... She's an alpha I'm male. I'm pretty sure she did, yeah. She didn't say she's like an alpha male. She said she is an alpha male. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Just what the hell? <laughs> she obviously equates herself to one and thinks that she, you know, could stand up to one and be one. So more power to her. And uh, Shamir is the first out of the shop. Floyd says he memorised flags and Joey hates LA because he can't jaywalk. And he's the only person with an incorrect flag. Yeah. Unlucky. Dodo music. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't really matter, does it, in the end? So it's okay. And also, can we just talk about Becca's voice? Like, yes. before the preview, we hadn't watched any of the videos deliberately. Well, sort of deliberately, because we couldn't get them to work. But Becca's voice is something else. She, she, she's just... Uh, just a bundle of joy for me. I just think she's fantastic. Everything about her, I just think is great. I love her because I work with people who are like Becca and they make me like her, like like a Becca when I'm at work. It's it's insane and it's the happiness, spreading happiness with that voice and that energy. I just love it. Yeah. I was worried that her fun meter stuff was going to become very annoying, but it's actually kind of endearing. It is. It is. She, yeah, she's just really lovely and bubbly and positive and happy and, and actually quite competent by the look of it as well. So I think she's just going to be brilliant. Yeah. And I think her choice of Floyd was pretty good. Because, mm. because we were discussing mm. a lot about how we weren't sure whether anyone would actually be willing to play along with her shtick and do the beatboxing and all that sort of stuff. But Floyd is probably the only person who would have done that. Yeah. Yeah, she's made a really good pick there. Yeah. She's made the one perfect pick for her. Mm -hmm. At the risk of sounding like the MTV show Are You The One, she's made the one perfect match. Indeed. Also, Mikey Negative with no beard. Discuss. Mikey Negative. Where's Mikey? I'm, I've got my huge list here of people trying to find where Mikey. Mikey? Is that his name? Well, that that's his nickname because he looks... He's the spitting image of Mikey's era. Okay, like, no. What's less... his real name? Michael. He's the butcher. Yeah, Mike and Les. Oh, there! Down the bottom. Okay. Yes. Um, interesting. Yeah. Very different interesting. without a beard. Yes. And this task, basically, there isn't a lot more to say about it. Um, Joey gets rejected. He works hard. And then we get the picks. He works hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why, but I'm just, I've decided I'm going to just turn Joey into a Boston stereotype now. Okay. Here we go. That's it. Win him, win him over, mate. That's the way to do it. Uh, so Seth gets first pick, and he picks Olive. Yeah, in, in probably the most predictable don't... one. Yeah, Sorry. and don't they go with their hashtag? Oh my days! <laughs> you... Can we can we hashtag. just put a minute on the hashtags because I am she... on record uh... as hating the hashtags with a burning passion. But I have to talk about these hashtags as we go down. Yes, we will be talking about hashtags because I ha I have some alternative ones. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> Good, because some of them need it. Normally, they come out like just some CBS intern has done it. But this year, I don't think you can even give it that level. It's like I've never seen such a complete mess of hashtags in my life. <laughs> this is just useless. Oh, <laughs> I love how they got creative and went, oh yeah, we'll call Seth and Olive Team America. And then by the end, you could just tell tell they were going, uh, 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 Team, team, no team Van and Ashton. 
<laughs> rather than the obvious one, which is Beauty and the Geek. Yep. Come on, guys. <laughs> they can't do that. They can. <laughs> it's the perfect opportunity, and that is what I'm going to be calling them. So, oh, yeah. so because Olive gets picked, uh, Matt gets the next pick, and he picks Redmond. Not the survivor spoiler. Yeah, that, that joke's going to get worn out pretty quick, isn't it? A strong team. That's your alpha team, isn't it? Yeah, have we got an alternative one for them? Uh, well, they are the only boy team, so it's pretty apt. I, I do, but I don't trust you. You'll leave it in. I've, I've got one, but you'd have to cut it out. Okay. I'll, I promise I'll cut it. Don't, yeah. No, don't say it, Anthony, because he won't cut it out. No, I will, I will cut it. You know I, him. I don't trust you. No, don't trust him. Don't trust him. As Michelle well knows, if someone says I want something cut out, it does tend to get cut out. Okay, you can take put it in put it underneath. No, don't even do it now. Wait till we finish podcasting. I will. <laughs> and, and say it. Go on. I, I, I promise I won't put it in. It's funny, but it's very inappropriate. That's I, all I, mean, I, I, I promise I won't put it in. No, <laughs> I'll, trust him. I'll no. send it I'll send it you in the chat. <laughs> yeah. And but, then no then Michael will say it. No, Don't later. Yeah, after, after we finish, I'll, t I'll tell you what yeah. I would have hashtagged them. Come on, say it. I won't put it in. I promise. Michael, your word means nothing. I have. Okay? I have never. Stop. I have never broken that promise, Michelle. It's fine. Oh Move Jesus! On. Yeah, Move on. go on. I've broken next. I have Hashtag broken the boys Shamir? is perfectly fine. I I have broken other promises on this podcast, but never that one. <laughs> now, is it Shamir or Shama? What do you say? It's Shamir. 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 Because yeah. there isn't an E, so I'm wondering. Shamir. Yeah, so Shamir picks uh, Sarah. And I was I had to pause when I saw their hashtag because I was trying to work out what they were actually trying to spell. Because yeah. the, the S and S Express is not a great hashtag. It's not great, and it's caused but, confusion, hasn't it? Because they've already been called the Sands Express. Yeah, but I... Because it looks like Sans. I read it as the Sans Sex Press. Yeah, that was my first... Okay, the capitalization that, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah. it needs, needs to be written in camel case. It's got to be with the right capitalization. Otherwise, yeah, it does look really inappropriate. But it's the S&S &S Express. That, that I is... I think that S Express. Da -da 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 that is legitimately <laughs> a terrible hashtag. What does it mean? Yes. What does well, it the, mean, really? Both of, both of their names begin with S. That's it, isn't it? I know, but it's, it's, it's just an dreadful. S I know for twenty-seven, the hashtags came from the most common nickname of the team during the season. Yes, but I, unless they ask for themselves to be called the SNS Express by other people, they're not going to be called that because that's a stupid name. Yeah, it's given something else. They need something else. But the question is, what that? Hmm. <laughs> They need to do something. Because we didn't of see much. Of it. No, we didn't, we didn't see much. So, hard what to does do. Sarah do? Oh, she's real she's estate. Real estate. She, she's one. Is she the? She's the luxury, luxury real estate. Luxury real estate. Real estate. Yeah. So she's Middle she's one. Wall Street banker. She, she's the one who lives on Virgin Islands. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Other than bank. <laughs> yeah, hers is an actual island. <laughs> Having said that, Virgin Island does sound like a. Uh, an early 2000s CBS reality show. <laughs> this week on Virgin Island. You know what? Why didn't they use the actual um, and the symbol? It would have helped. I don't think you can use it in a hashtag. No. I think okay. it, would break, it would break Twitter. <laughs> but surely they know that people are going to either deliberately or not deliberately read that wrong. Yeah. Did you, uh, I can't did believe you... you read it like that, Michael. I, I, the cow. How did you read it like that? The sunset. The the sunset yeah. express. <laughs> yes. I mean, most of the rest of us read the Sands Express. <laughs> or actually, I didn't. I read it as the Sand S Express, and I don't know why I was doing that, but because it was a capital S, and then a capital E, I thought the S has to be by itself. I think we can just agree it's a really bad hashtag. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's an utterly terrible hashtag. Oh, geez. We have to get something else. Um, anyway, on to the best pairing of all time in uh, Scott and Brooke. They don't have a team name for me, they just have a heart. Aww. <laughs> because that is the exact pairing I wanted. And clearly the legal guys wouldn't let them have Team Will and Grace, because they tried to get it in, but it's not been allowed. Yeah, especially with the reboot. Yeah. 
Could have been a bit of a free advertising. So that hashtag is extremely boring. And why couldn't they think of anything else? Their hashtag is the new Blaley. Yes. Uh, yes. It's better than that. Uh, and next up is Team Fun, which is Becca and Floyd. Woo! Yeah, what a team. I, lo- I love these guys. They, they're going to be so much fun. They're definitely going a long way, so we're going to have a lot of fun with them all season, I think. And some weird stuff, like they, they happen to just live like five minutes away from each other. That was quite bizarre as well. They're probably the team who I think are going to be best friends by the end of this season. Yeah, mm. definitely. You think they're, they're your fan favourite fourth place finisher? I'm not sure. I don't think we've seen enough of them to determine who's going to be the fan favourite fourth place yet. I mean, given that they're my favourite team, that kind of puts them in that category already. But there was a lot of them in that preview. Yeah. They're going far. If they do end up winning, then that is a very obvious way to show it. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is why I'm leaning towards them probably not, but we'll see. I think they're going to be a fan favourite, whether it's fourth place or is another story. Yeah. Mm. Uh, next up is Beauty and the Geek in Vank and Ashton. Another boring hashtag. <laughs> oh, Ashton hates it so much. And she that's why I love this pairing. Nourish. She's not you, happy. She? You could tell from her face she was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I want muscle. Yeah, I didn't get muscle. Yeah. <laughs> And and even the production just rub it in, don't they? There's like that shot that just goes back to them with these with the sad music later on when we get to meet London and Logan together, and it's like I need some muscle. Cut back to Van and Ashton looking sad with the sad music. Oh my gosh, she's just trying to breathe through the pain. I think you're That's right. It. I think you're right. And then in the least surprising pick from the bios, it's Tara and Joey. Yeah. It was blatantly obvious that if Joey was still left, Tara was going to pick him. Because she said she Why? wanted... She said she wanted someone who reminded her of her husband. Yeah. Yeah. And Joey's the only why? older guy. But, but why? I don't know. I don't get it. They're going to be... I don't get most women, actually. They're going to be going out reasonably yeah. early, I think, anyway, so... Yes. Think... Yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to be a mid-tier boot. Mm, feels like it. Because we can actually talk about who we think is going to go far and who we don't now, now that we know the teams. Mm. And team mom and dad, that's their hashtag. Yeah, brilliant. That's almost as bad as a name. It's not the worst, thankfully, but it's getting close. Mm-hmm. No, because you're more than being a mother and a father. You're more in life than that. But a better angle for them would be the fact that Tara is serving in the military and Joey is a police officer. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Team rules team, or something team, like... Team defending our freedom. Yeah. <laughs> team freedom. <laughs> team freedom. Team, team America. <laughs> team America. I know that was close to Seth and Ollie, but still. And talking of teams who aren't going to go very far, we have London and Logan. Yeah. They're going soon, I reckon. They've got a nice hashtag, but that's only because they came up with it themselves. Yeah. Lol, lo. Not bad. It's better than your names. So we're, so we're thinking team low, low in the rankings. Yes, I think they're going to be going out quite early. Mm-hmm. I can see what you're thinking there. We didn't get to find out an awful lot about them, did we? Nope, and they seem like a complete mess from what we saw of them. I don't think they're going to be working together particularly well. I think they're going to come across something that they're not very good at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have Jen at picking Kevin. Which, my hashtag for them is recipe for disaster. (laughs) (laughs) I would have liked them to go further. I was enjoying their banter and their interactions. I was kind of relieved they went, to be honest. I think it would have, yeah, I think it would have been pretty dull pretty quick. Had long hair, didn't care. I think they were, they both kind of had the attitude in the bio of making the, the Asian jokes and, you know, that's not something we're very good with no uh, and they, they're both just too laid back aren't they you, uh, they highlighted it themselves when they went out you've got to have someone with some real drive to to get through this but it, it does prove that rugby has no success in america this is true as opposed to canada where rugby is doing very well yeah Apart from the toronto, wolfpack. toronto wolfpack are so far unbeaten 
like ever. They've never been defeated in a competitive game. Yeah, in about three games. <laughs> well, I think it's five now, but hey. <laughs> the, the rugby aside in the preview was just because I knew you'd be listening and I had to, <laughs> I had to do some sort of rugby aside for you. I was so disappointed you talked about rugby for five minutes and didn't mention Toronto when you were talking to a Canadian. Ah, oh, well, never mind. Anyway, we can cut it from this one, otherwise Joey will get cross. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Long hair, don't care. <laughs> and then in the final pick, Mikey Negative picks Liz. i got to go with the cowgirl. The cowgirl who starts the race wearing jeans and cowboy boots. Yeah, that's yeah, right. please. Uh, come on. She stuck please. out like a sore thumb on that, uh, that cast photo, if you notice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who does that? The only one wearing jeans. But imagine if it was a water task. She would have been screwed. Yeah. For God's sake. Uh, I think these are going to be interesting while they last, but they're surely not going to get more than halfway through, are they? I'll be very surprised. And their has hashtag is equally rubbish. Team Liz and Mike. Yeah, we need an alternative for them. Yeah. Did you say, okay, did you say... Some teams thought of their own hashtag and then production did the rest. Well, Team Lolo, they mentioned it, didn't they, in the cab, so they've obviously picked up on that. But the rest, I'm guessing they just didn't say anything. That for, oh, we got Swole Sisters when they said Soul Sisters, so... That was... I will give them credit. That was Alan Wu style puns, and I love it. Yeah, that is a good one. That is but good. why age. Swole? I don't understand. Swole is a, a word for, like, big, muscly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fit. never heard it. Okay. That's clever then. Yeah, it's a good pun. I'm it's very good. I, I will give CBS credit. That is a good pun. I think they clearly the used all. Terrible. Yeah, they must have used all of their pun budget on one hashtag this season. <laughs> I get the feeling that they probably came up with that one first. Thought our jobs are done. Let's, yeah. just, <laughs> let's phone it in for the other ten. Yeah, just put them at the top of the list and hope nobody reads down it. And uh, as a result, the Swall sisters, Jesse and Francesca, or Francesca, uh, get teamed up what did you say isn't she francesca it's francesca francesca Fran francesca i'm not sure there's I've got no to Q -U -A. what are the <laughs> americans doing again y you have seen survivor redemption island haven't you michelle? there's no qua michelle there's no you michelle, there. michelle it's How a philip shepherd reference that? michelle <laughs> michelle it's 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 called a joke it's from survivor redemption <laughs> island <laughs> why are you doing that you have seen the first episode of Redemption Island where Philip Shepherd can't pronounce San Francesca. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> when he can't I pronounce you Francesca. You were doing it. No, no. I, I am just taking the piss with it. Oh, but but I, I can't see the name Francesca without saying, without calling her Francesca now. Okay. Sorry. I don't remember everything he said because he was a little bit insane. It's kind of infamous though. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, Michelle, never change. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't intend to. <laughs> so, yeah, when everyone gets gets their pairings, um, they find out that one piece of luggage has the Express Pass in it. Whee! Your favourite device in the whole of the show. Well, Double Express Pass is my least favourite. I don't mind the Express Pass. I'm on record as not hating the Express Pass. <sighs> I just hate the strategy behind the double express pass. Yeah, yeah. I know I quite like the random express pass. A few people moaning about it that they, you know, you should have to work for it, but I think it's fine because it never, ever, ever, ever has any consequence in the show anyway. So but just get it out randomly. There is exactly one time that it has ever really saved a team, and that was Gary and Mallory. Yeah, so it is fine. And it went to a fun team, literally. The fun team. Um, and as a result of being last, unlike most Amazing Race seasons, Jesse and Francesca get a positive thing. They get to ride with Phil. Yeah, fun times. And we find out in the cabs that Becca and Floyd have the Express Pass. Yay. <laughs> Wish it was uh, Scott and Brooke, but that would have just been even funnier. On a less good note, though, no full intro. Frowny face. I know, only the abridged version. Oh, no. But maybe that's because we just had 10 minutes of them telling us who everyone was, so we don't really need to see them flicking their hair, do we? I need to see these team intros that were probably filmed after the finish line, like the blind date ones were. Yeah. I, I, 
If do you, you want to the... do you want to take a, a punt on whether or not Jen will be flicking her hair? A hundred percent. She's got to have the the traditional model style hair yep. flick. Yeah, but will we have anyone jumping out of a bush this year? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Sadly, not. <laughs> I love that all the networks seem to understand that actually the intros are the funniest bit, and they just need to have the silly shit in them. Yeah, I love the full intro. It's it's my favourite thing. But hey, we'll get it next week, I reckon. Mm. And Logan admits his biggest secret, which is that he's a farmer's sales rep. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise! What is it with those on reality shows? If you work in pharmaceuticals, you have to go on a reality show. I don't know, but he used some sort of euphemism on his bio. To yeah. kind of avoid that admitting he was a farmer sales rep, even though everyone knows he's a farmer sales rep. Oh well, we're not going to have to talk about him for much longer. <laughs> uh, so there's two separate flights from LAX, one that seems to leave about three hours before the other, uh, and it's Matt and Redmond, Becca and Floyd, Brooke and Scott, Logan and London, and uh, Seth and Olive who are on the first flights. Mm. And despite Phil's, um, Phil's best efforts, Jesse and Francesca make it onto flight two with Van and Ashton, Tara and Joey, Shamir and Sarah, Kevin and Jen, and Liz and Mike. So what do you think happened there then? Phil take them on a scenic trip. Well, it's LA, so it's mad traffic. Yeah, well, why was it more mad for him than anyone else? He's, oh. he's probably just not used to driving in LA. Yeah, it could be. Oh, he was in the driver's seat, wasn't he? At the beginning oh, yeah. Of yeah, yeah, he, he driver's hat and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And once they land, they have to make their way to the Mirror Flores lock and search for the next clue, but more importantly, self-drive leg. Yay! Hurrah! It was like they'd just been building up to that. It's like, everybody's going, will there be a self-drive? Will there be a self-drive? Yes! The very first thing they have to do when they leave the States. Fantastic. More importantly as well, since we recorded the preview, they've announced that Jeep are a sponsor. Ah, cool. Oh! Apparently, okay. so I've heard. Excellent. I hope they go somewhere where they drive majority manual cars. That yes, I, I think we might get some uh, some manual driving. Yay. Which is awesome because there are definitely people in this cast who say, I hope I get a partner who can drive a manual car because I can't. Oh, no good. I love that. To which my response is, why? Why, why apply and not get a couple of lessons before you go? Are you trying to look stupid? I had this argument with Logan when we were away because Canada is majority automatic as well. But... It's not hard. You can, in an hour, you can learn the principles of it. Yeah, not that difficult. I know the principles. Yeah, Me getting good. through the traffic lights in time before they change tends to be rather difficult for me. It's just patience. That's all it is. You yes. just have to stay calm and remember how to do it. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Even though I drive an automatic now, I did drive a manual for a long time. But yeah, it's not that hard, really. A couple of hours, you'd be fine. In the UK, at least, if you have a manual driving license, you can drive both. If you have an automatic, you can only drive automatics. So it's a life skill to learn a manual car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no excuse. Get on it. Tar 30 people. For Tar 30, if it is going to be an all-star season, I don't want the obvious all-stars. I want the biggest hot messes we've ever seen. That's what it should is be. Is it going to be all-stars? Well, that, that's what all the Tar people seem to oh, think, but I don't, think, God, I don't think Diana better not get pregnant. I don't think it is. The Amazing Race, hot mess. Yeah, I'd like that. I want to see Kurt and Bergen come back. <laughs> Mainly because X's are the best teams ever, but Kurt and Bergen having to be in the same room would be hilarious. But having to learn how to drive a manual car, even funnier. What would have been really funny is if that's what had happened to um, Jesse and Frank Vasqua, is they just said, uh, yeah, you're getting a lift to the airport. Is our special guest, because CBS like to do this these days, bringing them back. It's Kurt and Bergen, everybody. That would have been great. Four days later, they still not left the park. Oh, I, I, I just need them to keep referencing Kurt and Bergen's mishap, <laughs> especially as I was in Munich a few weeks ago. It was just brilliant. I went went to the Alter Peter Tower and just thought, <laughs> this is where the fun began. <laughs> uh, so, Floyd beatboxes in the car with Becca, proving that he's her perfect match, and everyone gets lost before Seth and Olive get to the route marker first, and they get an on-location report. So good for them. And teams must now find the Panama Rainforest Discovery Centre Tower, where they will find their next clue. 
It was lovely, everybody getting lost montage that yeah. someone had put together. It was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. Panama is obviously really hard to drive in. Really hard to drive in, and apparently nobody in Panama knows where the Panama Canal is, which does seem a little bit odd. And once they get there, it is a detour, which is shoot or scoot. I mean, shoot. Uh, teams must paddle to a marked area and then knock two ceramic fish off a pedestal with a bow and arrow to get the next clue. And in scoot, they must win a canoe race against a professional team to win their next clue. For every loss, they move 50 metres closer to the uh, finish line. And also, this is where Brooke begins becoming my favourite. Because she just becomes an absolute hot mess with Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Telling me to calm down makes me worse. That would be most women. Yes. Don't tell us to calm down. Don't ever use those words. It's simmer down appropriately. Oh, never. Never tell us to do anything of the sort. You'll get your head bitten off. Uh, so, yeah, Seth and Olive lose their first race. And then Brooke and Scott choose uh, shoot, but then go, actually, no, we'll switch to scoot. And then Seth and Olive lose again. I hate it when teams switch detours. Really? You must have hated this detour then because there were so many of them. Oh, it, mm. it just, two things for me is if you're going to switch, switch very, very quickly, which they seem to do all right at, but never, ever, ever switch back again. You've just wasted all of that time. Just stick with it. Just go for it. And and it looked like either of these were doable. You've just got to think about it. Which, oh. which one would you have done? Uh, I'd have done shoot, definitely. Definitely. Because of the phrase, race in a boat against a professional crew. Kind of clues in the title there. No, one thing I was surprised at is nobody seemed to sort of think about a strategy of this race. So I, if I was forced to do that and I wouldn't have picked it, I'd have just gone really easy on the first round, knowing that you're not going to beat them anyway. Conserve your energy so you've got a slight chance of doing it the second time round. Because if you go all out first time and lose, you're probably still tired on the second round. You're going to lose again, so you're going to have to go to the third round. Which, incidentally, do you think they were always going to win the third one? I think so, yeah. It seemed like it, didn't it? Certainly when, by the time we got to Mike and Liz, it, they could barely row and they managed to win on the third one. They got a 100 metre head start. Yeah, still got another 300 metres to go though, haven't they? True. But yeah, um, I probably would have thought about shoot at least. Had I known about the handicap, maybe I would have gone for, for scoot, but... Um, yeah. I, I would, no, I still I, would have yeah. gone shoot. Yeah, I'd always go for skill over pure physical strength but that's just me depends who your partner is as well it does that's very true um and i was all set for there's absolutely no way anyone's going to win on round one so take it easy and then i was proven wrong on that so what do i know but it doesn't matter about your partner because you have to be equal in something like that you have to be rowing equally or else you're not going to go straight mm -hmm. that's true and they don't even know each other at this stage so it's a big risk isn't it to, to go with that one so yeah, Seth and Olive are the first to leave Scoot with three attempts under their belt. And the teams must now find the Cena Costera Trez, the pit stop for this leg of the race. The last team to check in will be eliminated. Will be eliminated. Which, I know that Logan will give me grief for this, might be slightly unfair. In any, If any season's going to have a first leg non-elimination, maybe it'll be the one that has people teaming up with people they don't know. I would have liked that, actually. I actually thought maybe they were going to make this non-elimination. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised. You're right. I mean, we, we've had non-elimination first legs. This would be the one, wouldn't it? As it happens, maybe it was the best result with mm -hmm. Jen and Kevin. Mm -hmm. Because them going out in a self-drive leg is just, you know, absolute wondrousness. But any other team, I may have argued for a, a non-elimination this time. Mm -hmm. And Becker and Floyd leave shooting second before Brooke and Scott obviously lose at Scoot. And then Matt and Redmond blow everyone out of the water, leaving Scoot in third after one attempt. Just painting that big old target on your back, guys. Well, yeah, doing that, but also kind of making a mockery of that these guys are rowing professionals. So two guys who've never met each other before, one of whom has an artificial leg, are better than so-called professional crews. <laughs> to be fair, they are both technically professional athletes. Yes, yeah, but but they they've never worked together, and they've never, as far as we know, done this 
before, yet they're better than the best that can be offered. Yeah, Matt is a professional snowboarder, and what they neglected to mention in Redmond's video, but they did mention in his bio, is the fact that he won an amputee games. Yeah, but still. They both have pretty good sporting pedigrees. Not not arguing that, I'm just saying. Mm. You put them up against professionals, and two guys who've never done it before can beat them. How professional are the professionals? Yeah, if if I was going to put money on any team doing that, it would have been Matt and Redmond. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, but yeah. And um, Seth and Olive checking in first, and they win nothing! No, what's happening? Not even not even a Amazing Race prize, is There's no Express Pass or anything for winning the first leg. It's just nothing. No, they win uh, the hearty handshake of Tara Vazro. <laughs> The problem is we can't see her because she's currently invisible. Yep. Just continuing the Amazing Grace joke. Um, yeah, Brooke and Scott leave uh, Scoot in fourth. Uh, and Becca and Floyd checking in second. Matt and Redmond checking in third. Brooke and Scott checking in fourth. Have you made the wrong choice? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 I'm delighted with my choice. Honest. Not at all. It's so good. And then we get the fun where Tara and Joey start sinking, as do Van and Ashton. And then Van and Ashton switch to shoot. Yeah, because Van went shot when he was at school, like, 20 years ago or something. What What are we thinking of Van? Because, I mean, two minds, he's got that kind of geekiness, but normally there's more to it. He's just, I don't, I don't know, I just feel like he should be a little bit more of a geeky stereotype. He's just kind of a bit meh at the moment. Yeah, he... I think they'll be out quite early. Yeah, I do, when, when I see someone like that, you just think, well, there's, there's got to be a reason they've cast him. And yet I'm not seeing it in episode one. Yeah, that, I'm not sure if Ashton would have been the right choice for him. No, maybe not. Maybe it's just a, an unfortunate pairing. Yeah, I, and bear in mind, he got the choice here. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think he made the right choice. I think that is not a good match for him. No. But who was left? When he did that, there was... Uh, I have to look at my other list. See, there were quite a few left. There was Tara, mm -hmm. Joey, London, Logan, Jen, Kevin, Michael, Liz, Jesse, Francis, Qua. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a lot left. Mm -hmm. Would you have liked any of those instead? I'm not sure who his best pairing would have been. Mm. But I, I, just, I get the impression that they're going to go out purely because they are not going to get on. Yeah. Mm. So, he didn't make a good choice. No. No, I don't think he did. Um, but we'll see how it pans out. And uh, Shamir and Sarah leave Scoot in fifth before Van and Ashton switch right back round. And then London and Logan lose their second attempts, but then leave in sixth with Tara and Joey in seventh, Van and Ashton in eighth, and Jesse and Francesco in ninth. Sorry, dry mouth. And then Liz and Michael switch... Uh, then Shamir and Sara checking in fifth. Liz and Michael sink. Sixth was Tara and Joey. And kudos to Phil for trolling Joey with the flag, because that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seventh was Bank and Ashton. Eighth was London and Logan. And Phil, I'm taking back your Michael point, purely because you are trying to perpetuate the blind date myth again. I know, I thought Stop for a it. second he, f he forgot what season he was on, the whole London and Logan thing. But Logan has found a partner off the race. Indeed. It's Sarah, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's correct. So well done to them. And then Liz and Michael sink again. Mikey proves his nickname by being negative. I love uh, his face palm in the car. <laughs> How good was that? Love it. He does a lot of it in this episode. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I missed, I missed um, talking about Vank in the car saying... Um, do a 135-degree right turn. <laughs> <laughs> I even for a second went, what the hell is he talking about? And then I realised, okay, he means this. But then when he explained it, I thought, she's got no idea. Right. Normal people would just count the exits. Yeah. It's, it's the second exit or whatever, isn't it? It's not the one at the 135 degrees. Nobody has a protractor <laughs> when they're driving. Oh, God. New MH rule. If you are navigating, th imagine you're a sat-nav. 
Take the <laughs> second exit. Exactly. At the roundabout ahead, take the second exit. Do not say 135 degrees, because unless, unless you're with someone who didn't fail high school maths, they're not going to know what that is. Also, I have another point. I think Shamir watches Survivor. He said, when they were rowing, dig deep. There's a couple of Survivor references. Someone talked about a game changer towards the end as well. Mm, yeah. Shamir obviously didn't watch Survivor close enough because he did not shout, dig, woman, dig! <laughs> Yeah, could have been more topical. <laughs> He's not the new probes just yet. Uh, so ninth was Jesse and Francesco, and then Liz and Michael leave in tenth after their third attempt. And Kevin and Jen get given their clue due to safety concerns. But when they get to the pit stop in tenth place, they find out they have a two-hour penalty because they had to quit the detour. In, in effect. A little no. harsh there. A little it, harsh. Yeah, I'm guessing they've based that on it. It was taking teams two hours to do it, but it just seems quite a long time, doesn't it? Two hours to do, even if they had to do four races? I don't think so. Mm, it does seem a bit unfortunate. But how lost must Mike and Liz have got? Because they left before them. They still managed to come in after them, and they'd set out certainly some part of a two-hour penalty as well. I wonder how long it was. I want to know. Mm. I think that was kind of the point of making them self-drive in Panama, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try and get them lost. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. It's great. It's great production decisions. Which is not something I can always say about Amazing Race. <laughs> Amazing Race 24. I, I have no issue when it's the team that gets themselves lost. I have a slight issue when it comes down to you've got a bad cab. That's, I think, a little bit harsh. But this is all right for me. Or when a challenge can't go on when it's too dark and then a penalty is given. You know, it's a little bit sad. We also don't know how long after uh, Mike and Liz left that Kevin and Jen were given their clue. No, that's true. Because if they said it was the last race that Mike and Liz won, the very last race that they could do, then maybe it was only two minutes. Yeah, in which case that two hours is probably... Fair enough, isn't it, I guess. Uh, so, 10th is Mike and Liz, leaving Kevin and Jen to be eliminated in last Friday face. So, instead of a next time preview, we get a this season preview. And I was trying so desperately hard to not work out who'd got to Venice. <laughs> they did show a lot of it. <laughs> they showed about three or four clips of Venice, I think. So, we see Scott crying, climbing, Venice, three U-turns, including one blind one. Mm. A skydive, compasses, helicopters, and mum and dad have a little fight. Yeah. And what are we gleaning from the this season rather than a next time on Pretty Dull episode two? Well, they always do this after the premiere now for some reason. But yeah, they've mm. the last few years. On the... Because it's Logan's biggest bugbear. You do. It does tend to give things away if you can figure out where they are. Especially when you show a shot of someone wearing a, uh, a gondolier's hat repeatedly. Yeah. But, I mean, if you don't know what the order is or what countries they're going to, which is which is me, then it's not giving too much away. No, but you know each week that they're going to be in, they're not going to, if, if they don't go to Venice next week, you know that they're not getting eliminated next week, don't you? Yes, yeah, I understand that. I didn't really look at it. I tried to blur my eyes. <laughs> and also, they, they did show a shot of the person in the gondolier's hat on a ferry with about four other teams. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know who the final five is if you watch that, like, not even that closely. Yeah. Well. Really? Does yeah. it guarantee it's the final five? I don't know that. It could have just been bunched together. It, it's something like that, yeah. Because v Venice is not next week, put it that way. Mm hmm. I do know what leg Venice is, but I'm not saying. Yeah. It's don't true. say. No, don't, don't say. say. I want to go fishing with Becca, just so I can yeah. call it Operation Kill Fishy. <laughs> <laughs> and what they didn't say in the preview is that next week is Brazil. Hey, that should be fun. Another uh, Sao Paulo this time, which I'm, if I'm not mistaken, hasn't been visited since season nine. I will bow to your superior knowledge. Season nine is the only time that they have actually been there mm. in the US, at least. Okay, it's going good. It's, it's really good that they're revisiting places they haven't been to in a long, long time. It should be fun. Yeah, if they're not going to do new countries, at least they do 
cities they've not been to for a long while. Hmm. Uh, so who do you think is going to go home next week? Oh, um, Lolo would be my top of my list. I wouldn't disagree. I think Lolo are quite close to the bottom in terms of teams. I think you are actually going to have a chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Van Ashton? Michael and maybe? Liz? No, Van and Ashton are going to stick around for another couple of weeks just because you can tell production love their dynamics so much. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. Uh, Michael is, yeah, possibly. Which you think would be a shame. I think I think there could be some potential there, but yeah, you probably could be right. Uh, but other than that, they're, they're actually quite strong teams, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. Annoyingly strong. And we've only got one male male and one female female. Yeah, wow. it's a good change. Mm. Having said that, a lot of people in their bios did say we want a, a partner who is a different gender to me. Hmm. There weren't a lot who wanted to bro down. No, no, and yeah, they, they, you don't have that. Yeah, there's not really that sort of douchey bro character, really, is there? So Matt would be as close as you would expect, but I don't think he is. So because snowboarders have such a good legacy on this race. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, is there anything else to say, particularly this brief podcast today? No, I just think it was a, a stronger start than uh, than I was expecting, really. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought. I guess because it had just got bumped that much in the schedules. I thought maybe it can't be that good. Um, but, um, yeah, I, th I thought it was a, a really strong start. One of, the, one of the stronger premiers from the last few years, I would say. The, the premiers have been reasonably strong, actually, recently. Yeah, but still. Even the 28 one, and I didn't enjoy 28 that much. Mainly because of the outside stuff, but even the 28 premiere wasn't terrible. It just, mm. 28 just got a bit there. Yeah, it was okay, 28 premiere, I would say. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think it's just that they haven't really hyped this up very much. So I kind of came in just willing to take whatever they were going to give us. And yeah, it was, it was a really strong start. I think given the random nature of how the teams could have landed, they've landed really well. Um, we're going to get some really good dynamics, some brilliantly fun teams and some strong teams, which is what I like to see. And I, I'm interested by the fact that they're hyping up three U-turns, one of which is a double blind U-turn. Yeah, they don't, don't normally announce things like that. In fact, the opposite often happens is that there's U-turns that go on air because nobody bothers to use them. So I'm taking from that that each one of those three must get used. Yeah, the, the implication is that someone's getting U-turned. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm also interested about what they're going to do for team photos. Because would they have done team photos in Panama, maybe? Maybe, mm. at the end, at the pit stop. Mm-hmm. Because there's going to have to be some team photos unless you just use nameplates, which, you know, sucks. But it, it looks like they're going for the 28 route of the traditional looking U-turns, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But also, what are they going to use for the group pictures? Uh, yeah, Is yeah. my question. I hadn't thought of that. So well, you're always, always thinking about the production stuff, aren't you? I am. Um, yeah. The combination between the production stuff and how much everyone loves Italy. <laughs> 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 so yeah, is there anything else to say about this leg? No, um, I'm done. I'm good. Okay. Right. Thank you for listening to this URC Team Number Podcast. You can join us next weekend to recap the second episode. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us on our Facebook page, Reality TV Warriors, on our Twitter account, RTV Warriors, or our own Twitter pages, MD Health Dove Me, Bulls Boy for Anthony, and Bear Three 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I love the fact that because it's the three of us, I'm just carrying on the Hudson jokes of Michelle hating her family and Michelle having a ridiculous Twitter name. <laughs> I made it when I was young. Well, you can change these things, Michelle. It's not hard. No, but everyone knows me on that. I am Bear333 three, three, three in a lot of different places. But everyone who searches on Twitter for Bear333 three, 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 <laughs> from the podcast is going to get very confused. Oh, let's hope they just Google my name. <laughs> is my name anywhere? Yeah, it is. It is on the writing. That's right. If you want to search her name, it's Bloody Michelle Pierce O'Denno. <laughs> <laughs> Australia There's joke. Only there is only one Michelle Pierce Denovan in the entire world, let me tell you. See you next week. <laughs>
Bye. Bye.